Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Virtual Racers Club. What do we have here then? Well, I will let you know. We have got our Virtual Racers Club's very first knockout tournament. It will be a 1v1 knockout. The tournament will comprise of 16 drivers over four rounds of racing. Each race will be a three lap sprint with the loser being knocked out and the winner progressing to the next round. So in round one, each pairing will drive an identical group four machine for a three lap sprint race. Then the quarter final, each pairing will drive their group four machine from the previous round in a three lap sprint. Then we go on to the semi final. Each pairing will drive the new N300 Toyota 86 in a three lap rally event yes we're gonna get dirty in the mud love it then the final the final pair that haven't been knocked out will drive identical Shelby Cobras in a best of three shootout so our boffins back in the VRC labs have been rating our drivers over the course of who knows when and how long so they've all been given kind of like a rating and they've been paired up with their equal driver so it's nice fair fighting out there then we did a draw live to find out what car and what track that pairing will race at race one was going to be the Audi at the Nürburgring race two was going to be the Renault at St. Croix then race three a Dodge Viper at Laguna Seca with race four being the Ford at Big Willow the Mitsubishi is race five at Suzuka the Subaru being race six at Interlagos race seven Aston Martin at the Red Bull Ring and then race eight, the Jaguar at Lago Maggiore West. And our lineup is after the draws, race one is I Bunting versus Homesick Alien in the Audi at Nurburgring. Race two is Daz versus Jim in the Renaults at St. Croix. Race three is Gasman versus Liam Anfields in the Aston Martin at the Red Bull Ring. Race four, Shren and Racer Brown in the Jaguar at Lago Maggiore. Race five is Guesty versus Skyjacker in the Dodge Viper at Laguna Seca. Race six will be Amat Psycho versus Talarans at Big Willow in the Ford Mustang. Number seven, race seven, will be Pat versus Rido in the Mitsubishi at Suzuka. And finally, race eight is Ruben versus Koika in the Subaru at Interlago. And I think that's it. That's all there is to tell you. I mean, the, the only one can survive these first round and they go through with their car. So in the next round, you'll have Audi versus Renault, Dodge versus Ford, Mitsubishi versus Subaru, and Aston Martin versus a Jaguar. But I'm going ahead of myself. First of all, we've got to get this first round out of the way. So here we are for race one of the VRC 1v1 tournaments. And we have the pairing of I Bunting versus Homesick Alien at Nürburgring in the Audi TT. This is going to be corking. Who's going to win? Who knows? So, the lobby settings is the BOP is on. Tire compound, racing soft. The tire wear is off. Fuel is off. 
the time of day will be 12 o'clock sunny in the afternoon uh, the slipstream is real shortcut penalty is off ghosting weak boost off damage off and the grid is standing with false starts and the grid order is determined by the driver rating so the lower rating driver is sitting on pole which will be eye bunting in this case there you can see they're sat there ready to go in their very nice looking audi tt's car 17 will be driven by i bunting you see it there Whee. and car 77 will be driven by homesick alien this is a very exciting so without further ado let's start this three laps of madness and see whom will come out victorious and ready to go through to the next round so we're looking at bunting on pole with homesick alien they both make a cracking start but I Bunting takes the early lead into the first corner here at the Nürburgring. Homesick Alien trying to stay close. He wants to get in there and get ahead early doors. Three laps of this madness we've got going on right now. My keyboard wasn't turned on, so I'm trying to do some keyboard action in the background. But I Bunting is holding him off for now. And Homesick Alien right there on his jacksy looking like he's ready to make a move we're only a couple of corners in already Holmes Galian having a look up the inside but there is nothing there and I Bunty fending him off as he left the door open oh no Holmes Galian still holding back at the moment and there's nothing in it between these two drivers car 17 and car 77 cracking down towards the tight hairpin Holmes Galian has gone for the move up the inside and he takes the lead and I Bunting now drops back into second place. Will his head go down or will he fight back? We will see. I Bunting now gets to see the back of Homesick Aliens car. And this is it. No no, re no redos. No. Let's have another go. This is it. Three laps. And one is out. And so far Homesick Alien has done the job in his Audi against I Bunting. I bunt in. Let's get on board so he can see what he can see as he chases the alien up the hill towards the chicane. Alien breaking heavy. I bunt in not so heavy, but ooh, and he's given I homesick alien a little bit of a breather there after breaking so late into the chicane. And this one is looking like car 77 has got it tied up after lap one as they start lap two and it's a, a slam dunk unless homesick alien makes a mistake homesick alien quite wide in that first corner I bunt in following him through he's got a bit of ground to make up I bunt in he's just gotta find his center Homescalian is a beatable. We have seen that in past tournaments and championships. These two have raced each other in the Clio Cups. Ibuntin has come on top many a time. Ibuntin, the winner of the Clio Cup. But Homescalian has won numerous events MTCC, and Max 5, the WRX Challenge, to list just a few not including his wins in the endurance championships or the endurance one-off races but homesick alien so far holding that gap between i bunting that one one breaking mistake from i bunting seems to have cost him this a little sprint race but we will see you never know what's going to happen we're watching homesick alien now coming around short straight heading down to the very fast right hander and anything could happen I bunting still there just in the picture it's not over just yet 
I blunt in. He's staring down the barrel of being out of this tournament so far. Unless Homesick Alien does something radically wrong. There goes Homesick Alien to cross the line for the second time to start the final lap here. I Bunting was faster, was faster on that last lap at 202.950. Next to home six, 203.204. So, I Bunting just needs to find a little bit more, dig deep, and come back at the alien. And they call him Homesick Alien for a reason. I think it's a Radiohead song, but <laughs> it does fit. So car 77 has this under control so far. Just a mistake is what will cost him this race. I bunting just a little too far back to have an attack on the alien at the moment. These cars look cracking, but it does look like I bunting is drawing quite closer to the alien. And he'll be kicking himself, Mr. Bunting will be. With that small, slight mistake when going into this corner, was it? As he chases down the alien. It seems weird doing just a three-lap race with just two cars, I must admit. It means I've got to do more work, fill the gaps. <laughs> and homesick alien coming down the final straight through the very fast right hander up to the chicane the chicane is what i bunting's hoping alien will make a mistake in and homesick alien just has to keep it on track and facing the right way to take uh, this a win today and go through to the next round here he comes around the final corner i bunting just couldn't do it on the day and there you go, Homesick Alien is, ooh, no, 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 ah, oh, through. Ding dong, here we go, we're on to race two already. The first one was an absolute blast. And uh, this pairing is Jim versus Daz. They're in the uh, Renault Megans at St. Croix B. And uh, they look like they're raring to go. Car 66 uh, versus car 51. Who will be the victor of this one? Shall we find out? Not half. If I remember to press play, that is. Here we go. So we're looking at Jim on pole uh, versus a Daz. How's it going to go? No one knows. It helps if I've got some engine sounds. There you go. Boom. And they're waiting for the lights. And it's a go, go, go. Jim having a good start. Daz looking like he's having a bit of a better start. He's pulling up closer to him. Oh, he's almost half a car's length up. No, he's just tucked him behind. Sorry, the camera was sent me in the wrong direction. There they go, flying in their Renaults. And so far, Jim keeping that lead. And this is a tricky track technical track coming up to a sharp left hander heavy on the brakes that's giving Daz a good opportunity to draw closer let's get on board with Daz he's got the best view as they're heading up around the long right hander that's always falling down the hill then onto the brakes to a kind of a chicane isn't it ish and then tight all right as they head over to the bridge and many a man has met that barrier but not this time for this pair. Awesome stuff so far. And it looks like Jim just edged away from Daz slightly. But like I said, a very technical track. So mistakes could be made. By gum, Jim was close to that barrier, wasn't he? Eh? And Daz, that's helped him a lot. He's got a little closer as they make their way around in the Renaults. Daz taking a different line to Jim, then tucking him behind, see if he can get a bit of a toe down this short straight. Daz having a look up the inside of Jim, which way is it going to go? No, he's pulled back in, he's just trying to distract him. Trying to get his, 
him in these mirrors and Jim doing an absolutely cracking job so far oh what's look back I don't know there you go there's look back let's get a better view there you go so looking back from a Jim's car oh he seems to have grabbed a couple of car lengths from Daz through that section of the track but oh look at Daz coming back now with a great force back out there Jim's still holding on to that lead but Daz Daz has now just edged forward into the final corner and now Daz is going to have a turn leading on the second lap as they cross the line and this is too close to call Jim having another look but he's going to be on the outside they're side by side going into the right hander and Daz still just edged ahead of Jim but Jim's tucked up right behind are poised poised to make a move on the Daz he's looking one way he's looking another but at the moment Daz are doing all he needs to stay ahead and it is really even between these two but Daz just edging away from Jim Jim just touching the curb there it's beautiful stuff to see these Renaults do look fun to drive I must say both of them survive that barrier again but as they come out of the bridge section and go into the left-hander we know many a man has been scuppered by this heavy braking but they seem to both be doing okay they get through and no one's even close to the barrier look at that fantastic driving but so far Daz he's kept maintained that distance ahead of a Jim Jim he's just willing Daz to put a wheel off somewhere possibly and uh, they're both getting well yeah purples because it's the second lap so they would but to me by my eye it's looking like Daz is just edging away from Jim at the moment. Jim lighting up the tyres there, breaking into the corner, leaving it as late as possible. Trying to gain some space on Daz, but at the moment Daz are keeping it smooth and sweet around here at St. Croix for our 1v1 race 2 the tournament of knockouts oh I thought Daz was Jim was hanging it out there a bit and it does look like he's lost a bit of time to Daz oh Daz has had a little knock on the barrier though that's not going to help that's going to bring Jim back into play if he's not careful but at the moment Daz doing a 2.18.5 on that second lap with a 2.19.8 from Jim so Daz has got it all sewn up in a tidy little bow at the moment we're into the final lap it's Dazzers to keep and it's Dazzers to throw away all the pressure on Daz at the moment as he makes his way around the final tour of St. Croix and he's going faster again and Jim is just he's, he's I think he's caught up a little bit possibly as they're pushing the cars to the limit and heading around they're back over that bridge for the third and final time both avoiding the barrier and it's a great racing here from these pair Jim going a bit faster again on this lap fuel and tyre where remember is all turned off Oh, I think Jim really hanging out there. He got lovely and close to that barrier. He is pushing like mad to try and catch up Daz. He wants to be in the quarterfinals. But Daz there, he's got it. I think he has got it, surely. Though I'm not sure. Daz is pushing his hardest, uh, Jim, I'm sorry, is pushing his hardest, so he can have a look up the inside of Daz, he really loves lighting those tyres up into that corner, but to me it looks like 
Daz might have this one stitched up. He's getting ready for the qualies or at the quali at the quarterfinals already. Sorry, the quarters, not the qualies. But it's tight stuff. Oh, Jim having a little barrier nudge. And Daz now getting to the final corner, and it looks like it's all Daz. Daz into the quarters. Our second man to go to the quarters. He's come over to the flag. And there you go. He's through. Sweet stuff from Daz. Jim, it was a close call, though. Look at him. He's already there at the flag. So it was very tight racing from this pair. And that is the second driver, Daz. We see go through to the quarterfinals. Fantastic stuff. Beautiful. This is going to be an absolutely wonderful tournament. I'm looking forward to the next six races we have ahead. And I'll see you at race three. So here we are then. Race three of the Virtual Racers Club 1v1 Tournament Knockout. We've seen two cracking races so far and two people gone. Who will be the third person to book their place into the quarterfinals? Here we see the pairing of Liam Anfield versus Gasman. It's a very tight match, this two. Car 89 versus car 39. Gasman on pole with Liam Anfield in second spot. Who will be the one to take the spoils here at Red Bull Ring? So we will just have to wait and see. Let's crack on. Is there a better camera than that? Ooh. There we go. Looking at the back. They're in the Aston Martins, by the way. At the Red Bull Ring. Who will come out on top? There they go. They are off. Gasman ahead of Liam Anfield. Liam Anfield trying to make his way across the track to get the best in that turn one. Is he going to take the turn straight away? He's Oh, they're both off. They're both off the track. And uh, Liam Anfield. Oh, no, Gasman. <laughs> is still ahead so Gasman and Liam both having to go off on that first corner heading up to turn two Gasman still in the lead at the moment in this early part of the race car 89 showing Liam the back end of his Aston Martin will sit from Liam Anfield's point of view as they head down to a very tricky corner. And these Aston Mines don't like corners. As they make their way. Oh, oh I thought Liam was going to lose it there. He closed up nicely on Gasman. And what is Liam going to do? Is he going to play the patient game? Or is he just going to go and attack straight away? As they come down. Around the right-hander. Straight into a rather fast left. Coming up to the end of the track. I don't think this is a long enough straight for Liam to try and grab a toe at the moment. Gasman owning it all on the first lap. But Liam Anfield very close behind. Is he going to try and attack into the first corner? Liam Anfield. He's tense behind Gasman. 145 from Gasman on that first lap of 40.8. So there's nothing in it between them. And both off again on that. They're not even bothering with that first corner. <laughs> so Gasman leading from Liam Anfield. In all fairness, I think Liam got caught out with the breaking of Gasman there. And nudged Gasman wide in that track, in that corner. They make it through turn two. And now Gasman has got himself a little bit of breathing space from Liam Anfield. Liam Anfield's really going to have to pull something out of the bag in these final two laps to try and get himself ahead of Gasman. Both are champions, I believe. Gasman winning one of our endurance championships. Well, the endurance one-off races, a two-and-a-half-hour race. And I think Liam Anfield won us... I don't know. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he's won something. <laughs> 
and Gasman so far doing the job that he needs to do to stay ahead and go through to the quarters and then Liam's got some ground to make up at this point as they head around the final two corners into lap three this is the one that counts oh Liam's hanging it out wide there he's going to try and get a run up this straight on Gasman Gasman going faster that last lap around a 35.9 now Liam's trying around the outside but Gasman smokes up his brakes and tyres and now Liam Anfield is on, on it he's onto the grass he's on Gasman he's on the grass and he's trying to get to that inside line going up to turn two and Gasman's not going to be able to defend from it as Liam is already halfway up and is this it for Liam and Bill? is he going to go through they're both side by side going through turn two that was stunning stuff and Liam Anfield just edging it slightly ahead of Gasman at this point as they come down to turn three Liam Anfield getting that inside line and Gasman, oh Gasman just having to make way but Liam Anfield's overcooked it in the corner, he's gone in too fast and Gasman now can moonwalk to the line. Oh poor Liam Anfield, he'd done the hard work and he, but that corner is a right, I've, I know that, that dust bowl on the outside of that corner, many a time I've met that bit of sand. And now Gasman just cruises on home and cruises into the quarter finals, it seems. And that was exciting stuff there at the Red Bull Ring. And Gasman now going around the final corner to take the spoils and head be the third car heading in to the quarters. As Liam comes around that final corner, I can almost taste his tears. Wow. So, Gasman into the quarter. Oh, gosh. Gasman is into the quarters. And unfortunately, and Liam Anfield is out of the tournament for now. Until next time. Now then, let's have a look at race four. Interesting mix that one is going to be. And now here we are with race four with the pairing Shren versus Racer Brown Shiren being car 69 and Racer Brown car 86 in the Jaguar at Lago Maggiore can't remember, hang on, let me have a quick look on Discord to tell you what side west side ok, so Lago Maggiore west Shiren is the pole sitter, they have three laps to duke this one out, and only one can survive to the next tournament. The Jaguar looks absolutely fresh in its VRC tournament colours. As you see, they both line up on the grid, eagerly anticipating to get this show on the road who will be the dominant driver between the two of them let's see we've had some great sh short races so far and seen who has gone through to the next round which one of these two will it be without further ado i will find out for you well we'll find out together so we'll crack on with uh, this one Shiren on pole against a racer brown we're waiting for the lights and then it's away we go in the Jags. And they're off. They are off indeed. And Racer Brown looks like to make a better start. But Sharen, the Russian sensation, is holding that lead so far. Racer Brown having a look around the outside. But Sharen sees him off and says, no man, I'm coming through. So Shiren, the early leader in this race, but Racer Brown is right there, keeping an eye on the Russian. Car 69 are leading the way for this three lap sprint to see who goes through to the next round. Racer Brown pulling out there, 
looking like he wants to make the move early doors. They're nearly side by side, going down to the very fast hairpin. Can Shiren fend off Racer Brown? Racer Brown's already up the inside. Racer Brown, it says he's in the lead, but Shiren's got the inside line, and Shiren comes out ahead of Racer Brown. Fantastic, but did Shiren put himself on the back foot coming out of that corner to defend giving racer brown the better speed up the hill racer brown having a look around again but sharen is still there in the lead but racer brown's trying to break up the inside sharen's gone to the inside to cover it off racer brown's still saying no i'm having that inside and sharen doing a fantastic job at the moment maintaining that lead from racer brown we spoke to sharen when the draw was done and he didn't sound confident against Racer Brown, but he's seen him off for a lap so far. But Racer Brown has put on an a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure. And now Racer Brown lining Shiren up, but Shiren looking to take that inside line. And oh, Racer Brown's done him on the straight through the toe. And now Racer Brown is the leader of this race. But Shiren's coming up the inside, trying to have another look. And it's almost side by side as Shiren goes in, trying to lay break in the inside of Racer Brown. But Racer Brown maintains that lead so far, but it's very close between the two of them. There is nothing in it as they make their way round for lap two. This is absolute crazy racing. Shiren trying to stay in that toe. Racer Brown trying to break the toe. Now Shiren... What can he do? He's going for the outside line there. He's going to try and get a good drive around. He's going up the inside of Racer Brown. Does he get a better drive up the hill? It looks like he has. Racer Brown on the back foot with Shiren now looking. <coughs> Excuse me. For take the re lead. To take the lead, but Shiren's got this inside line and he does. He's retaken the lead from Racer Brown. This is so tight and Racer Brown's looking up the inside of Shiren. But Shiren has it all covered. This is fantastic stuff. Little sip of my warm beverage. A bit of dust in my throat, a bit of dust. So Shiren still holding that lead now, coming round to the end of lap two. And I would say this race has been even Stevens. Oh, Racer Brown out wide. Does that help him? Takes a little bit of extra track to get that speed up and he gets the toe from Shiren. Shiren's fending off that inside line but it doesn't matter around here if you can stay around the outside. Shiren's got a little slide on and Racer Brown takes it up the inside. Oh, but Shiren's back up the inside. This is crazy racing here. Shiren on that inside line in second place trying to fight his way through. He wants to go through to the next round as does Racer Brown and Racer Brown's still holding on to that lead. So far but Shiren's there up the inside. Oh my word, there's nothing in it between the two of them, they're very close. Racer Brown's just edged it a little bit, but Shiren's going to have that inside line. He can break a little later than Racer Brown, but Racer Brown, it looks like breaks a little bit later. There you go, Racer Brown fends off from Shiren, and Shiren loses a little ground to Racer Brown now. As they come round the second part of this track, Lago Maggiore, West Side. And Racer Brown looks like he's got the business done. But wow, he had to work for it. And Shiren can walk away full of pride in this one. And there's still a couple of corners to go. Anything can happen. But Racer Brown seems to keep that car planted. And he's doing a fantastic job with Shiren. Just dropping a little bit back as they come through the final corner. And Shiren's really out wide. He's really giving it some big balls. And there goes Racer Brown to take the win and go through to the next round. Unbelievable racing. That is fantastic. And now we're seeing a good picture of what the next round is going to look like with whom has gone through so far. This is lining up to be an absolutely cracking little championship or tournament, should I say. Okay, so what's next? Race. What was that, race four? So we're looking forward to a race five. And that will be coming up in just two seconds. And the fun just keeps coming on. My word, we're here for race five. The fifth pairing, Guesty car 85 versus Skyjacker car 99. 
and they are taking the Dodge of Vipers out around Laguna Seca. Guesty's form of late has been remarkable the last few months. He's come on strong and Skyjacker very fast but has a tendency to lose the back end. So this one could be anybody's. What a tournament we are having so far. And here are these guys in their Dodge Vipers. Oh my God, the wall's in the way. So you can't get a great look because it's a very tight circuit here and the corkscrew can ultimately decide all. So there they are in their Dodge of Vipers are ready to do battle. Who will come out on top? We've already seen the first four racers. Who's through to the next round? And which one of these are going to throw their hat in the ring? Without further ado, let us crack on then. Oh, God. What sort of shot is that? And that as well. My word. Good old Laguna Seca. So, here we go. <laughs> Guesty on a pole versus a Skyjacker in the Dodge Vipers around here at Laguna Seca for a three-lap shootout. Who is going to take the spoils? They're revving their engines, getting themselves ready. And there they go. The lights has gone green and Guesty making a good getaway. But Skyjacker's got that inside line running down to the first corner. And Guesty can't get over there enough to try and block. So there he goes, Skyjacker. Late on the brakes, up into the lead already by the first corner. And Guesty's got it all to do, but he's right on the tail of Skyjacker now. And let us have a look inside Guesty's car as he does his work. And they're making their way around here, the Dust Bowl. That is Laguna Seca. And the wheel's screeching on that Dodge Viper as it doesn't like going round corners. Guesty looking for an opportunity. Oh, a bit of a late break from Skyjacker. Guesty's just lifting off to let Skyjacker get back on. Oh, my word. This is a turn of events. And now we're having another restart. Guesty waiting for Skyjacker. What politeness there. I suppose he did give him a nudge into the corner. And now Skyjacker gets going again. So drama on the first corner. I mean the first lap. As they make their way around. And Skyjacker has still got that lead ahead of Guesty. But their, their rhythm's been interrupted by that. As they go through the corkscrew the first time. And uh, that spin I don't think we can count as Skyjackers. But there may be more in the next three laps and Guesty back on it again looks like Guesty's got better control in under braking of that car but he's just got that pesky Skyjacker in front of him in the way as they make their way round for this first lap Skyjacker leading the way in car 99 these Dodgers look absolutely beautiful they've all looked beautiful so far these tracks Talleyrand is the man that's done the liveries and he's done an absolutely blinding job as they battle it out around here for the second lap Guesty trying to find a, some sort of attraction to get himself ahead of Skyjacker he's going for that outside line but it's not there oh maybe it is he's not going to get caught out by the braking this time because he's looking up the inside to try and lay break in there and Guesty has taken the lead Guesty's on the curbs though he's lost a little bit of attraction there and a Skyjacker just swoops from underneath and says all day mate all day so Skyjacker briefly losing the lead there from a Guesty, but we can see what corner Guesty fancies doing it, and he's got one other chance as they hit the corkscrew, and they both make it through a second time. Fantastic stuff. It looks like Skyjacker's pulled a little bit of a lead out there, which he's going to need because there's that one corner that Guesty is strong in. And Guesty got a little slide on through that corner. And that Skyjacker still leading the way as they go through the very tight final corner. And it catches a lot of people out there, but not these two. As they make their way to cross the line for a second time and into their final lap. Who is going to win this? It's cracking stuff. And uh, Skyjacker so far, fastest man out there with a 29-0. Guesty's all the way up in his business, having a look up the inside in the first corner. 
but there's just no room there. Skyjacker, a brilliant defender. It has to be said, he can defend a position like no one else. And he's making his way around as Guesty kicks up a little bit of dust. And now, oh, Skyjacker, he's pulled out a lovely bit of space there for this corner. This is the one Guesty gains the most on. And Skyjacker comes out ahead of that corner up into this corner. <laughs> oh, I don't know if they've got names. <laughs> But Skyjacker leading the way in this race here. Race 5 for the VRC 1v1 knockout tournament. Into the corkscrew they go. They both survive again. But Guesty very close. Guesty's looking for a last minute move on Skyjacker. And oh, he was looking to try and get up the inside of the Skyjacker there. As they come to the final corner. And it looks like it's all about Skyjacker now with Guesty hanging it right out there trying to get something and they cross the line. Oh no, I didn't pause it in time. Oh well. So that was race five and Skyjacker goes through. Super stuff. Brilliant. And here we are at a race six. Only two to go after this one. And then we see our quarter finals. They're shaping up rather nicely, I must say. We're here at Big Willow in the Ford Mustangs to see the pairing of Car 16, Mr. Psycho, Matt Psycho, versus Car 20, Talleran. Matt Psycho is on pole. As I told you before, the, the the higher rated driver is put in second place and again you can see these liveries just look absolutely spanking so who will go through this one is a tight pairing these two drivers multiple championship winners in the VRC and they are unyielding in their racing. You can see the view they've got down to that first corner. And let us see how it all works out for a place in the quarter finals. We're looking at Matt Psycho on the grid. Oh, is there a better shot? There we go. Beautiful. The sun just gleaming off of the Dodge Vipers. And the lights are nowhere to be seen for us but there they go and a good start from Talleran just slightly faster than Mr. Psycho Matt Psycho though taking the lead it's a good run up into the first corner and Matt Psycho is leading this race so far three laps around Big Willow in the Dodge of Viper and um, Talleran has got it all to do from that position and uh, so far Matt Psycho on fire out there through the first corner is that one corner that big round one who knows into the next and this is a tricky part of the track going uphill trying to turn these dodge vipers that un i mean dodge ford mustangs around uh, that don't like to turn and so far matt psycho has got the measure of talaran let's have a look on board with talaran as we chase down matt psycho there we're heading downhill up to one of my favorite corners in game the final corner of big willow is absolutely cracking it just keeps going just keeps turning and Talleran looking like he's caught up a little bit on Matt Psycho there as they come around to complete their first lap he's getting a toe down this quite long straight drawing ever closer to Matt Psycho. Will he try and go for a late break into that first corner? He's gone for the outside line. They're having a hug and Talleran, oh no, 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 Talleran's put a wheel off. He's put a wheel off but he's not lost too much ground on Matt Psycho but Matt Psycho's still got the lead but Talleran's got that inside line and there we can see Talleran looks like he's just about made the position but they're side by side coming out of the corner and now Matt Psycho's got that inside line. And Talleran's still heading the lead at the moment. But there goes Matt Psycho. And now Talleran's got the inside line. 
but Matt Psycho doing a fantastic job there, taking back the lead here at Big Willow in the Ford Mustang. And Matt Psycho looking very tidy out there at Big Willow at the moment. VRC Talleyrand has it all to do as he chases him down, but he has got the toe on Matt Psycho. And we're coming around to complete lap two to go into the final lap. And there's a little nudge there from Talleyrand, but he's backed off. He's backed off. And in Matt Psycho is on the, ooh, the dirt. He's on the move, but it looks like Talleyrand, can he get much of a toe from back there? So it looks like a shock here from race far, uh, six. Sorry, getting myself all mixed up with Matt Psycho heading into this final lap with a nice bit of breathing space from Talleyrand, who is a little further back. Matt Psycho, all he has to do is keep it clean and keep it in a straight line and he has got this race done. It just looks like that one small mistake from Talleyrand giving Matt Psycho a nudge in that final corner. Having to back off and let Matt Psycho gather it all up again has given Matt Psycho the opportunity to go through to the next round, the quarter finals. This has been an intense tournament so far. And uh, Talleyrand is going to take a miracle back there, I imagine, to do anything about it. As a Matt Psycho comes around this final corner. To take all the plaudits. And uh, this one, low, and Talleyrand just throwing it right off the track to try and catch him up as he, Matt Psycho, crosses the line, and that's it. Matt Psycho is through to the next round, and Talleyrand is out. In my word, what a race. Fantastic stuff there from the two sim drivers here at Big Willow in their Ford Mustangs. And uh, Matt Psycho goes through to the quarterfinals. Unbelievable stuff. Fantastic racing. So we're slamming through these races. My word. Six down, two to go. Here we are for race seven. We've seen uh, six people progress into the quarterfinals and it's shaping up quite like a tidy little battle. But let's get race seven out of the way with car four Pat and car 52 Rido in their showdown in the Mitsubishi Lancers at Suzuka. This is gonna be a battle. And the cars look absolutely gleaming. So without further ado, race seven, here it comes your way as we get it started. Let's get it started in here. Come on, let's get it started in here. So Pat on pole, Rido in second, waiting for the green lights. And it's go. Pat having a cracking start there. Rido having a little store on the uh, on the start line, but R Pat flying off the grid like a whippet. Look at him go. Car number four, he's pulled out a little bit of a lead on Rido already. And he is heading towards the quarterfinal so far, but it's early doors as we're only on a lap a one of three here at Suzuka. And you know anything can happen, especially at Suzuka. Each corner has its own jeopardy as they head up towards... I've got the map somewhere. Dunlop curve. Wasn't that interesting, was it? <laughs> it's Degners, as you've got to watch it. As he breaks down now into the Degners. And uh, Pat absolutely owning this track so far. Ahead of uh, Rido. He's pulled out a little bit more of a distance from Rido. And Rido is chewing Pat's dust so far. Can Pat keep it together as he goes through the hairpin? And he heads up towards Spoon Curve. And you can barely see Rido. Rido's not having a great race in this one. And Pat is all over him. 
We've got similar miles on the car. 34 miles for Pat. Rido, a 34.8. So they are even Stevens with the mileage. If that's the miles they've been practicing, possibly not. Possibly in a different car. But at the moment, Pat is a yanking it. He's pulling away. He's owning it. He's owning this Mitsubishi Lancer, one of my favorite cars, as he heads up towards Casio. And it looks like he's pulled a little bit more out on Rido already. Rido, it's not his day. He's not on fire. We've seen some classic racing from Rido, but not today, it seems. And Pat getting better and better each race he does. He's uh, really hitting his form in here, the 1v1 knockout tournament for the Virtual Racers Club as they go through to lap two. And Pat is absolutely flaming Rido at the moment. But anything can change. We've seen Pat at the side of the road before. He has uh, this tendency to drop it sometimes. But at the moment, he's got it all under control as he makes his way around. Smashing those purples on his way. I suppose they all get purples on the uh, second lap though, even Rido. We'll be getting purples, but he's he's not lost any more ground to Pat, it looks like. But he's not gaining any ground to Pat. And now it's down to the fortunes of Pat, I guess, for Rido. Hoping that Pat drops it somewhere. And it looks like Pat's some four tenths faster on this lap than Rido at the moment. So the number four car looking like he's already putting his towels down on that quarter final place as he heads up towards Spoon flies through Spoon shall we have a look from his point of view as he takes it through Spoon I was on the right view then when I silly me there he goes hits the curb beautiful car control there from Pat in fourth gear heading up towards 130R is he gonna flat out do it we'll see Oh, he's a big lift there from the pasta. And Rido's off the road. Rido tries to flat through at 130 and doesn't quite make it. Pat already out of Casio as Rido enters in. And Pat going across the line to start his final lap. He does a 209.1. And it looks like he has sealed it with a 210.9 from Rido. This is all Pats as he brings her on home. Fantastic driving from Pat. Can he take this form into the quarterfinals? If in fact he is, there's still a long way to go and anything can happen. We have to keep an eye. But he seems like he's pulled out a little bit more distance on Rido. Rido, all he can do is drive tidy and hope Pat has a misfortunate moment. Pat going into Degba. And he's kept it nice and tidy. No problems there from Pat. He's going even faster again as he heads up towards the hairpin. Yeah, I'd unbreak it, Pat. Just peacock it all the way home. You've got the you've got the distance. You can mess about now. Put some handbrake turns on sideways through some of the corners. Give it a drift through Spoon. And Arido. Having a bit of a lonely race, really. I don't even think he can see Pat anymore, it seems. No. Pat already gone. So. See Pat bringing it down towards 130R any mistakes he's only got a couple of corners left to make them if they're going to be made and he's still going faster than he was before he's hanging it out there on the curbs as he breaks a four Casio and it looks like this one is Pat's 
as he brings it around that final corner and he crosses the line to book his place into the quarterfinals and Arrido just comes around that final corner and pulls. Hey, hey. So that was race seven and no doubt who won that? Pat had it owned from the beginning. So congratulations Pat and we will see you in the quarters. And unlucky Rido on another day you could have had it okay well that was race seven and now on to race eight and that is it here we are at the final race of the first round of the virtual racers club 1v1 tournament with the pairing of Ruben car 15 versus Koi car 23 they're in the Subaru Impressors at Interlagos, Brasilia. So, who will be doing the Samba at the end of these three laps? Will it be our Italian friend Ruben or Koi Carp? It's an interesting pairing. We haven't seen Koi Carp on track for a while. And Ruben only raced a couple of times with us. So it's going to be very interesting indeed. That's the site they've got, the first corner. And Brazil, it's all about the first corner and the last corner, in my opinion. So without further ado, let's see who takes the last place in the quarterfinals. Is there a better shot? There you go, that's all right, isn't it? So, three laps around Interlagos in the Scoobies for Salvo Ruben and Koi Carp, who will come out on top. Oh, it's a bit of a slurred start from Salvo. Koi Carp looks like he's got the lead already with that start. And Ruben harrying Koi Carp into the first corner. But Koi not messing around at the moment trying to get the job done early and get his place in the quarter finals as Ruben chases him around let's get on board in that car as he chases Koi Carp down the straight trying to grab a bit of toe heavy braking into this left hander oh that green stuff really slows you down as you can see because Ruben is really catching up Koi Carp now he put a wheel out on that dark greens of Ruben, lining him up for a move up the inside on Ruben, a retakes the lead, there you go, Ruben, coming back. So a Ruben leading the way through the hairpins, it's a right, then a tight left, a short squirt of the accelerator kink to the right and then heavy right again and Koi Carp not letting Ruben settle down he's all over the back of him we're only on lap one here for race eight of our 1v1 tournament we've seen seven people going through it's been very exciting and the quarterfinals are lining up to be very interesting oh no Salvo's gone out wide that's going to affect him up the straight and Koi Carp he should be able to catch him he had a good run through that final corner Whilst a Ruben, he put a wheel out there on the grass, but at the moment seems to be holding his ground. But there you can see Koi Carp carrying a bit more speed and getting a bit of a toe. Ruben already moving over to try and defend the corner. I think he knows Koi is on his way, but he makes a good execution of the first corner, stays ahead on lap two. But Koi having a look up the inside of Ruben, he's going to try and execute the move. And Ruben are trying to close the door, but it's a little too late because Koi's already got his foot in it. Into this corner and Koi up the inside. Can he make it happen? And that's Salvo just clinging on to that lead at the moment. Ruben still clinging on to the lead whilst Koi Cup is there. No more than like two inches behind. Not even behind, alongside should I say. And Ruben are back to being a full car ahead. And Koi keeping a very close eye on this second lap. And as Ruben's gone wide, Koi's gone through. But Ruben's got that inside line. And they are sharing paint around here in the hairpins. Couple of little bumps to let Koi know he's there. Is Ruben. Ruben's gone to off the track to try and get up the inside of Koi. 
and he manages it. He's back ahead, but Coy again back ahead now. Wow, what a fierce battle here we're having in the last round. Oh, the last race before the quarters. These two really want it. Coy's right in the lead there. A couple more bumps from these two. And Ruben back ahead. So, wow. I don't know how many changes we've had in this race so far. But Ruben leading as they cross the line. But these cars haven't even been more than an inch apart throughout these last two laps. And this is the one. This is the lap that makes it count. Who's going to come out on top? Because Ruben is leading at the moment. Koi Cup keeping a close eye on Ruben. And this is it. This is what it's all about. Koi Cup got the better lap on lap two. <coughs> Excuse me. With a 40.7. And he's getting purples again. Ruben it looks like he's a bit tentative going through that corner. It's, it is a make and break corner. And Koi really getting onto the apexes. He's lining Ruben up here as they get up to the fast corner and then they head around to the hairpins and can Coy get up the inside of Ruben Ruben right on that apex he's not giving Coy the opportunity to even have a sniff of the inside and Ruben so far defending well from Coy Carp in these beautiful Subarus and now Ruben putting his car exactly where he needs to put it to stay ahead. And it's all going to be about this last corner. Who does it best? Coy's having a look up the inside. And they're going up the hill now. Oh, my word. I'm not going to be able to pause this because they're both going to cross the line at the same time. And Coy is just slightly ahead of Ruben. And it looks like Coy may take this. Yes, Ruben's had to drop behind Coy. And it's going to be Coy, I think, into the... Uh, quarters is very close though oh my word oh no you can't pause that and that was Koi wasn't it I think <laughs> definitely Koi crosses the line then to book his place in the quarterfinals and Ruben is out unfortunately that was a beautiful race and now we're getting very excited as we move on to the quarterfinals